How Military Satellites Spy on You The Earth is surrounded by thousands of satellites, many of them operated by the U.S. military, the NSA, the CIA, and other institutions under the umbrella of national security. They are used for spying, gathering intelligence, monitoring anyone they want, cyber warfare, hacking, interception, drone operations that kill indiscriminately, missile defense systems, and much more. These satellites require ground-based stations to communicate and relay their signals. Of the 800 military bases the U.S. maintains around the world, a few of these bases operate as those ground-based stations, while others are covert surveillance sites. Some of these bases include Menwith Hill in the United Kingdom, Pine Gap in Australia, Waihopi Station in New Zealand, and many, many others. There are dozens, possibly hundreds, of programs and systems which are spying on the entire planet. Here's just a list of a few of them. All of these operations use both satellites and ground-based stations to spy, hack, monitor, intercept, and gather intelligence around the world. For example, PAN, the first Nemesis-class satellite, was launched in 2009. Its mission will be foreign satellite collection from space, targeting commercial satellite uplinks not normally accessible via conventional means. It is probably the first U.S. high-altitude signal intelligence satellite not derived from a Cold War era design. To develop a global spying system, the NSA and the CIA has been working with security agencies of other nations. It started with the Five Eyes program, an intelligence alliance comprising of the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK. The origins of the Five Eyes alliance can be traced back to the Atlantic Charter during World War II, but since the global war on terror began in 2001, the Five Eyes Alliance has greatly expanded. Today, in many cases, nations will spy on each other's citizens and then swap that information to bypass any loopholes. But they, there's a two-way thing. So, for example, it's illegal for America to, to spy on its citizens, but um, we can do that from this country in the UK. We, Men with Hill does that, and then sends the information, any relevant information back to the States. And the same, they, you know, the United States does the same for us. So we can spy for each other and, and share that information. So for example, uh, there was a time um, before 9-11 when it was starting to be questioned what, these, what the role of these bases were, especially of Menwith Hill. And the Europeans were getting very upset because what was happening was that men with Hill was being used to spy on commercial deals uh, and give uh, information to American companies about the counter deals that were being made with, uh, with other or counter bids that were being made for, for big um, contracts so that they could undermine those contracts, uh, those deals and, and get the contracts. And it was basically unfair, comp you know, unfair competition. Um, and those questions were starting to be asked. I must say this, this took me a little bit by surprise, uh, principally to talk about the subject, because when I was first introduced to Five Eyes, probably about 30 years ago, you know, you were sworn to this cone of silence. You couldn't even tell your wife that you had heard of this thing called Five Eyes. And, uh, when you went off to meet someone who came to your office and pulled down all the shades to have a chat with you, uh, you, you, you began to realize, <laughs> you know, somehow you were getting information that other people weren't. Um, it obviously, the membership of the Five Eyes represents for Canada, some of our most important relationships in the world, not just with the United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand. Um, these are, countries that sort of share, in my view, all of the critical elements of foreign policy, alignment on security matters, alignment on matters of uh, prosperity and, and economics, and alignment on matters of values and democracy. But then with the five eyes, there is a fourth element, not critical, but exists, which is this kind of broader historical, cultural 
overlay um, and you know long history of cultural cooperation and obviously uh, 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 action in international affairs and global conflict through a long period of time. So obviously these are intimate relationships. When it comes to spying on American citizens, then they'll want to, to root out people that they consider to be a threat in some way, um, in any way, really. You can imagine somebody who creates a challenge to, to uh, what's going on at the moment. So <clears throat> uh, that kind of thing. And in the, the UK, it's certainly been known that um, when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister, for example, there were a couple of people in her cabinet that she wasn't too sure of. So she got the United States to kind of keep an eye on them, just basically spy on them uh, and make sure that they weren't saying things that they shouldn't be uh, behind her back, that kind of thing. And I guess, you know, the same thing happens, the reciprocal arrangement. They've also been used to spy in the United Nations Keep, keep a track on some of the people in the United Nations. So anybody who's kind of going to be using electronic communications that needs to be kept an eye on will be kept an eye on. Generally, they use the, uh, the uh, excuse that the reason for doing it is, is terrorism. You know, and as you say, that could be justified. But <clears throat> it goes further than that. It actually looks more closely at individuals and um, what individuals' actions are, and, and it's tied in with other information too. So they do the kind of profiling of individuals, especially individuals they see as being uh, a threat in some way. So activists would be, would have, you know, some kind of particular focus on them, on particular activists, depending on, on how active they are at any particular time. And if they see, you know, like what's going on at the moment with Black Lives Matter, those people will be targeted by the intelligence services and their communication systems will be bugged, basically, <coughs> or hacked anyway. They won't even know that they're being tracked, but they will be tracked. Their phones will be tracked, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these things, you know, to keep an eye on the state is going to be secure against in, internal as well as external people. And that's, that should be illegal under, under the U.S. law. So they're breaking the law, basically. Among the Five Eyes Alliance, many other programs exist with the ability to intercept all electronic messages using supercomputers to dig out key messages. In 2013, the documents leaked by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden revealed the existence of several surveillance programs under the Five Eyes Alliance, including PRISM, X Keyscore, Tempora, Muscular, and Stateroom. These spying programs also target certain groups and individuals, monitoring their communications and whereabouts through phones, emails, internet activity, and more. The documents leaked by Edward Snowden showed us that the powers that be are planning for wars of the future where the internet will play a critical role with the aim of using the internet to paralyze computer networks and potentially all of the infrastructure they control. The Snowden Papers identified a program called PRISM, a code name for an NSA program that collects internet communications from various U.S. internet companies, such as Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, YouTube, Skype, Apple, AOL, and many others. So, not only are intelligence communities by the state working together to spy on all of us, the multinational corporations are working with them. Everything you do on the internet, on the phone, anywhere in the digital life is being tracked, monitored, and gathered. In addition, PRISM is the number one source of raw intelligence used for NSA analytic reports, and it accounts for 91% of the agent's internet traffic acquired under the FISA Section 702 authority. The 1978 Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act lays down the procedures for surveillance and collection of, quote, foreign intelligence information. Yeah, the new collection posture, which isn't new now because this was released with Snowden, so, you know, quite a few years ago. Uh, but <clears throat> the idea was to actually collect every single elect form of electronic communication that's made everywhere, not just in the United States, but everywhere. 
So this is an incredible amount of information and a few years ago would have been considered impossible. We just can't cope with that much of information. This is cell phone calls, it's emails, it's uh, internet activity and so on. And, uh, but now uh, with very powerful computer systems, I mean the NSA and the CIA have the most powerful computer systems in the world that they're, uh, uh, they're you know, that they can use. So they um, are able to, or they want to get to that position anyway, they may or may not be there at the moment, but they're pretty close to be able to do this, to sift through every single piece of information that they can. And then that this is using the partners across the world that have these bases, these collection bases, with those partners, collect this information, sift through it all, bring out the, the items that might be of use or of interest and then share that with their partners if they consider that to be the right thing to do. I mean, there may be some information that comes out they don't want their partners to, to see, in which case they won't show that, they won't share that. Hybrid warfare is a concept that brings together conventional warfare and cyber warfare using tactics of fake news, diplomacy, lawfare, and foreign electoral intervention into a form of political warfare. Cyber attacks and hacking play a key role in both covert and overt warfare. The hacking of communication systems and eavesdropping on, for example, embassies around the world is now commonplace. Cyber attacks also threaten to disrupt important infrastructure networks such as communications, the power grid, the financial sector, and more. All of these actions can lead to catastrophic results, leaving millions vulnerable and left in a fatal situation. But whoever said these military bases and satellites are here to protect the people? The Snowden revelations showed us that the global presence map by the Special Collection Service, SCS, is operating at least 96 covert surveillance sites around the world. It is not clear if this map is a complete list of operational SCS locations as it does not include the UK, Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Men with Hill participates in using US government satellites to target countries and monitor communications from telephone calls, Wi-Fi traffic, and other means. Also the development of artificial intelligence is, is a worrying thing too because a lot of this will be sifted through using artificial intelligence systems. And those artificial intelligence systems will be used to try and bring out specific kind of, as I mentioned, profiling of, of people, of individuals or, or even groups of people. So if, those, if there's something wrong with that artificial intelligence system, or if they haven't taken every single thing into account, uh, they may be targeting people that shouldn't be targeted. Well, I mean, they are targeting people that shouldn't be targeted, but I mean, in, for, for different reasons. So, and, and then they, you know, it depends again how, how far they go with this artificial intelligence. A lot of it is going to be used for, for reacting as well as collecting. So as well as kind of like a, uh, trying to work out what's going on with, with, between people, there will be a reaction to that. And whether that is kind of automatic or whether there's this so-called human in the loop to make sure that it makes sense what's going on uh, and doesn't really go too far, then um, there are all kinds of dangers. We're heading to all kinds of dangers that could go really out of hand here. And uh, they need a really close you know, scrutiny to make sure that things are uh, not gonna go crazy. On March 7, 2017, WikiLeaks published over 8,000 documents and files from the CIA. The leak from someone inside of the CIA at a high governmental position includes viruses, trojans, and malware used to intercept smartphones, smart televisions, and computer systems. The Norwegian Intelligence Service has also been working closely with the NSA. In December 2013, the Norwegian newspaper reported that Norway was providing the NSA with tens of millions of communications every month, focusing on Russian politicians, military, and energy targets in particular. Last year, the Finnish government also began discussing its own surveillance legislation, 
aimed in part at gaining access to its new undersea cable system called Sea Lion, which routes internet traffic directly to Germany. Russian communications may be able to bypass Sweden through this route. Sweden is directly involved in at least one major U.S. side warfare project and one of its operations known as Winterlight, which is a joint project of the FRA, the National Defense Radio Establishment of Sweden, the NSA, the National Security of the U.S., and the GCHQ, the Government Communications Headquarters of the U.K. These communications intelligence agencies are involved in hacking targeted computer systems with the focus of data interception, diversion, and tampering. Sweden has become a key partner of the U.S. and Britain in communications intelligence and has a third-party agreement in surveillance with five eyes. I mean, that happens not just with satellites, but satellites was the major kind of form of this because that was where the communications could be intercepted easily. Nowadays, there's a lot of communications done through fiber optic cables. And those fiber optic cables, some, somewhere or another come to, they lay in oceans through the seas, uh, but somewhere they will come to land. And in those places where they come to land, there will be similar collection points too. So it's quite easy to tap a fiber optic cable because you just need kind of like a, a mirror or something to, to, to beam the fiber optic the, the um, optical signals to another, to another place. You can split the optical signals quite easily. So that's easy to get into and that's taking place now as well. So it's not just satellites, but satellites were the beginning of all of this and now it's shifting to fiber optics. Although I think it's coming back to satellites to some extent too now. We need to keep in mind the information that we now know has only been provided to us through leaks from people working inside the intelligence communities. Without them, we would not know at what extent the surveillance state is actually monitoring, spying, and hacking around the world. The governments around the world have continued to lie to its own people despite several leaks exposing their corruption, and many of these leaks are several years old. Who knows what they are doing now? As technology advances, so too does the spying capabilities of these intelligence communities. And we've been working towards providing this much needed information to the public. For more information, be sure to follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for our email list, and visit our website at spaceforpeace.org.